Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to be taking yet another look at Yuzu Emulator. For anybody who doesn't know, this is an emulator for the Nintendo Switch. Now, this video is mostly going to be going over game compatibility, but we're also going to be taking a look at a lot of games that are now rendering better, performing better, and even a few games that only just released and are now booting. A few of the games we're going to be taking a look at include Super Mario Odyssey, Astral Chain, Fire Emblem, Three Houses, Pokemon, Let's Go Pikachu, but there are many more we need to cover, so let's jump straight into the video and take a look at all of the improved compatibility. So first up we have Cadence of Hyrule Crypt of the Necrodancer featuring The Legend of Zelda. Thanks to recent improvements, this game is now considered fully playable from start to finish in Yuzu's very latest Canary version. One thing I do want to make you aware of is the fact that this title is very, very GPU demanding, so if you have something lesser than a GTX 1060, 1070 or a 1080, you are more than likely not going to be getting full performance in this game. Graphically, the only issue that remains in Cadence of Hyrule is the fact that when you are hidden behind walls, your stencil outline isn't rendered perfectly just yet, but since that doesn't hinder gameplay in any way, this game can still be considered fully playable. Next up, we're going to be taking a look at Super Mario Odyssey, and to demonstrate exactly what was fixed, I'm going to have to show you an older version of Yuzu. As you can see on screen, this is Yuzu Canary 2543, a version of Yuzu from about 8 days ago that doesn't contain this GPU and performance fix. So what was happening in older Yuzu versions was every time that little tutorial prompt pops up in the bottom right hand corner, performance was being absolutely killed. Looking at our frame rate indicator in the bottom right hand corner, you can see we're running at 27 frames per second, and this exact performance issue would happen absolutely every time one of those tutorial pop-ups happened in game. Now, if you've ever played this game before, you'll know that those pop-ups happen constantly for the first few hours of the game, and since you can't disable them or bypass them in any way, there was no way at all to bypass this performance drop. In latest Yuzu Canary though, thanks to a DMA fix which was implemented by a developer Blinkhawk, this issue has now 100% been fixed and as you can see by the performance meter in our bottom right hand corner again, my game is running at times between 20 to 25 frames per second better, an absolutely huge performance jump and a very very welcomed bug fix. To be honest, I believe that it is because of this bug that many people think that Mario Odyssey runs absolutely terribly on Yuzu. And even though, yes, this game is still not at a locked 60 frames per second, even on my CPU and 8700K clocked at 4.6 GHz currently, it is now running a damn sight better than it used to in the past, especially in these areas affected by this DMA or tutorial bug. Now, unfortunately, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Pokemon Let's Go Eevee have actually been negatively affected by this DMA fix. You'll see that when I load into this Pokemon interaction screen, my performance has dropped down from a locked 30 to around 5 frames per second, so if you are experiencing this issue on any of the latest Canary versions of Yuzu, please be aware that the developers know about it and it will hopefully be fixed soon. Thankfully, no other areas of gameplay are affected by this performance regression, so as soon as it is fixed up, we will be back to having a Pokemon Let's Go absolutely perfectly playable at full performance. Before we move on, Mario Odyssey has even seen some graphical upgrades. For example, a lot of physics issues were solved, for example, the confetti explosions that happen when you unlock a flag. Another example in Mario Odyssey is the fact that these fish in the Lake Kingdom that were previously static are now animated and swim around underwater. As I said, there are dozens of these smaller little graphical upgrades, but I'm not going to be dwelling on those for too long in this video, so let's move on to our next game from compatibility, Fire Emblem Three Houses. This game has seen a radical change in its rendering output, but unfortunately it still has absolutely a diabolical performance. As you can see in our frame rate graph, we're getting one, two or three frames per second depending on where our camera is facing. Now Yuzu's devs do know exactly why the performance is as bad as it is, and they also know exactly why the character models are discolored like you can see in gameplay. This discoloration is apparently a very easy fix. We've even been told to expect an update on it in the next few days, but at least in respect to performance, we have no ETA on when any of these issues are going to be solved. 
it's still pretty cool to see a fire emblem three houses rendering as well as it does and hopefully we'll see improvements in the very near future but for now let's move on to our next game another brand new nintendo switch title astral chain now this game does in fact boot and renders its very first loading screen even outputting audio at 30 frames per second once it freezes like this but unfortunately at least right now this game does not get past this loading screen apparently due to kernel issues within yuzu emulator itself as with the performance issues in fire emblem three houses this is also apparently a very well-known problem and hopefully it can be fixed and solved very very soon now, I know I said this was supposed to be a video for Yuzu Emulator, but in the interest of keeping you guys as up to date as possible in relation to Nintendo Switch emulation, I thought it prevalent to let you know that Ryu Jinx Emulator is also booting this game and even allows the game to progress further. As you can see here, it also seems to be rendering 3D graphics, though to be honest, I'm not sure if this is 3D or if it's just a pre-rendered cutscene. Regardless, it's still really cool to see it progress further than Yuzu is currently progressing. Even though, in my use case, as soon as I pressed ZL and ZR, the playback just slowed down to a halt and eventually crashed. Upon loading the game a second time, it does actually load its menus due to the fact that it created a game save for us, but if you load that save game or create a new game, it just does the exact same thing over and over again where it just plays the intro video, slows to a halt and then eventually crashes. Now upon seeing Astral Chain booting on Ryujinx, I did test all of the other games which I've tested on Yuzu in that emulator, but for the most part they were either just loading to their menus and crashing afterwards, or didn't boot at all so for the most part any of the games I've shown apart from Astral Chain in this video are still best played on Yuzu. In future though I will definitely be doing more testing on Ryujinx especially so since they now have a brand new user interface which if you guys want me to do I will cover it in a video in the next few days. For now though let's continue with game compatibility and take a look at our next title Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Again, thanks to recent improvements to Yuzu, this game is now at least semi-correctly rendering its graphics in the title screen. On top of this, it is also now using probably about half the amount of RAM it previously did. On older versions of Yuzu, you would basically require at least 32GB of RAM or a very very large page file, and currently I am able to boot in-game using 16GB with no page file at all. Graphically though, the game has seen a significant reduction in the amount of vertex explosion that happens and even though yes we still do get a lot of explosions and a lot of heavy graphical corruption, it's still really cool to see things like the clouds, the skybox and many of the textures now correctly loading in game and as with other games like Super Mario Odyssey and Pokemon Let's Go, hopefully Xenoblade Chronicles will see some graphical improvements in future. So now that we've taken a look at a good few major Nintendo Switch titles, let's move on to a few minor ones in which we've also seen some very, very cool graphical upgrades. First up, we have Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. This game now has all of its fonts and menus correctly rendered. We've also seen fixes to the 3D rendering in the background. It no longer graphically corrupts every time you swap between any of these screens. Unfortunately though, every time you try to load in game, it's just going to go to a loading screen and it's going to freeze the emulator. Next up, we have Red Faction Guerrilla Remastered and unlike in previous Yuzu Canary versions, this game no longer crashes when trying to load into its title menu. It in fact actually loads into gameplay, however very similarly to how Super Mario Odyssey used to look many many months ago, this game now has similar tiled graphical corruption. Due to this corruption, this game I would have to say is completely unplayable even though performance wise it actually runs pretty well. Our next title for compatibility is Attack on a Titan 2 and unlike in previous versions which we looked at this game is no longer massively graphically corrupting on all of its textures. It now has properly rendered skyboxes that no longer corrupt, however it still does have this weird shadowing issue whenever you move further away or closer to objects. As with other games we've taken a look at in the past like Firewatch or City Skylines, Attack on Titan 2 still has some issues with transparencies on foliage and as with other games like LA Noir, it also has this weird zebra stripe issue on some of its ground textures. 
playability wise though it's actually pretty good generally staying at around 25 to 30 frames per second with the only performance issues taking place in some of the games pre-rendered or rendered cutscenes. Moving on to our final game for compatibility testing at least in this video let's now take a look at Onimusha Warlords a game that now has its 3D models correctly rendered in game. Unfortunately though as with Fire Emblem Three Houses this title also has a similar issue with sRGB where the red and the blue seem to be inverted and hopefully once we get that fix for Fire Emblem Three Houses this game and many of the other games that are affected by colour issues for example Octobath, Traveller and Lego Marvel Super Heroes will also be fixed. For now though, that's going to be it for this Yuzu and I guess Ryujinx compatibility guide. As always, if there are any games that you would like to see me test, please just let me know down below this video in a comment. And as always, if I can either buy that game or if I already own it, I will test it out for you absolutely and no problem at all. Before I go, I want to give another massive thank you to all of my Patreon supporters over on Patreon.com. You guys are absolutely awesome helping me to pay for things like electricity bills, water bills, internet bills and all of the games that I require for compatibility tests just like this one. So if anybody out there would like to help me with making these kind of videos, please consider heading to the Patreon link down below and pledging or donating to support the channel. As I always say, pledges and donations are 100% not required to get help from me either here on YouTube or over on my Discord server, but they are massively, massively appreciated. So to all of my past, present and indeed potential future supporters, thank you guys very, very much. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like down below as not only does it help with the visibility of this video, but also of my YouTube channel as a whole. And if you would like to see future uploads from me, please remember to hit the subscribe button and also also the bell icon to get notified as soon as I release any videos. So once again guys, thank you very much for checking out this video, have a great day and I will see you all in the next one.